I've got a bit of a problem. If you're subscribed to this channel, you've probably seen this video before. It's my most popular one. To give you a bit of a TLDW, I made this video to talk about a time where I felt burnt out playing video games in general, and eventually learned that through branching out and taking chances on games I never would have tried before, I was just burnt out playing the same genres of games over and over again. The video ended on a happy note, with a promise for me to branch out even further with games on my channel. However, not everyone got the right message from the video. If you look at the title and thumbnail and some of my other negative videos, you might get the idea that I'm a pretty negative guy generally. So this video seeks to fix that. Video games are fun, actually, and I think I should take a bit of time to actually show that I have fun playing games by talking about a couple games I've enjoyed recently. Foundationally, the games I enjoyed playing the most before I became burnt out on them were action-adventure FPS games. I loved the big dumb spectacle that came with playing through Halo or Call of Duty or Titanfall 2. Because of that, a great place for me to start was checking out more action-adventure games just switching to third person. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance seems like something that's right up my alley, all things considered. I was hesitant to touch it at first because I felt like it was a game that needed an incredible amount of time to sink into and understand the mechanics so you can have the most fun with it. What I mean by that is, well, let's take the new God of War, for example. This game is incredible, which shouldn't be much of a surprise. Who could have possibly guessed? What this game also is, is a big budget AAA PlayStation story experience. It's accessible. The combat, while fun, engaging, and satisfying to a degree, is kind of shallow. The combo you can string together with the axe or the blades are cool and cinematic, but you don't really get rewarded for being cool or cinematic with how you play. This lack of depth shows up in a lot of the loot you find as well. A lot of the armor or little talismans you find have a bunch of different stats that can affect your own wide variety of stats. This screen looks complicated and like it would require a lot of time to get used to, but being honest, you quickly learn in the game that the only thing that matters is this number here. As long as the enemy numbers aren't like three higher, you're fine. And that carries over to your combat as well. As long as whatever you're doing is killing enemies, you're doing great. There's no real need to worry about the combos you're throwing out or using specific abilities you spent skill points on. Metal Gear Rising is in this middle place where it took me like a little bit to get into the game and properly enjoy the combat, but once I did, oh my God, this game is big action incarnate and playing it was such an amazing experience. The feeling of chopping up anything I want into a gorgillion tiny little pieces is incomparable to anything else I've done in a game. Devil May Cry 5 is on the end of this spectrum, where it takes the most amount of time and effort to learn and get used to the mechanics, but when I finally learned it, it's like God himself came down and blessed my controller. This game is addictive because each enemy encounter is a new chance to be told I'm doing smoking sexy style in a game. Unfortunately, it took three playthroughs for me to actually finish the game. Third time's the charm, and even though I was still hesitant to sink the time into the game needed to learn my combos across three, technically four, characters, it was worth it, and I'm so glad I took the chance. Games that excelled through storytelling left me hesitant to explore them because I'm kind of incredibly stupid. The Last of Us left me nearly in tears, even though I unfortunately knew a few big spoilers going in. Getting to connect with Ellie and Joel and going on a journey with these characters, it comes to a point where even though Joel is choosing to objectively do something incredibly selfish in spite of the benefits it might have for humanity as a whole, like, I don't know, perhaps inventing an effective resistance to the Cordyceps virus for all of humanity, I still support Joel because I actually care about Ellie. I developed a liking for these characters because of their personalities and interactions throughout the whole game. It's to the point that these characters feel like they could hop out of the screen at any moment and hold a conversation. God of War Ragnarok got me to buy a PS5. I was so excited to know where the story went after playing through the first, fourth game that I just needed to know. Once again, I'm like left nearly crying towards the end, reconciling with Freya, seeing Kratos and Atreus connect with each other, more of Sindri and Brock, and getting to know all the new antagonists introduced throughout the game, everyone in this game eventually lets go or is forced to let go of something important to them, Kratos especially. My favorite story game, so far at least, has to be God of War 2018 though. Never before this had I been given a plot twist in a game that so incredibly changes the entire context of every single event throughout the story. I mean, the game sucks me in and immersed me in the world almost immediately. Right from the main menu, you're instantly put in the middle between Atreus and Kratos, and the tension between them is palpable. But reaching the end, that tension transforms into a deep bond between father and son, going so far as to make Kratos of all people not only tell a good story, but to even attempt a joke for his son. You should say, sure, I'll look for it as soon as you show me how. Yes, he did say that. 
that was the story. I've talked about it a few times on my channel before, but I'm a big fan of top-down simulation strategy games. I've played a lot of SimCity and City Skylines over the years. They're both calming, laid-back games focused on managing a city and its resources, so I was naturally hesitant to take that experience into a setting with actual stakes. Age of Empires 2 is so much more fun than I ever could have imagined, even though I get absolutely pub-stomped every single time I play it. It's the first real-time strategy game I took a chance on, mostly because I thought it ruined the fun and calming aspects I enjoyed from building my cities, but those same aspects turn into the reasons I enjoyed playing this game so much. Unlocking more land to build in on city skylines as a reward for building up a big population becomes a risky gamble in Age of Empires 2. On one hand, I could come across more resources that I need if my deposits are running out, but on the other hand, I could easily reveal my enemy and thus reveal my location to him as well. Is saving up my money to spend on cool parks or buildings or expansion of my city for reasons that are aesthetically satisfying turn into expanding my military might and looking upon my massive army for satisfaction? My experience recontextualize gathering resources in games like City Skylines in a way that makes me excited to experience more of the genre, and also makes me really want a co-op mode for City Skylines. Good god. I know I didn't talk about a lot of games, but I think after hammering the point in, you guys get that I was hesitant to try out these new gaming experiences because of a lot of preconceived notions that ended up not mattering. You don't need me to sit here and talk about Tunic, or Deep Rock Galactic, or the Mirror's Edge games, or Guilty Gear Strive, although I might talk about them on their own in the future. Time that needs to be invested in learning, a lack of an attention span, or ruining PvE with PvP aspects, none of it ended up mattering after I actually sat down and played the game. Burnout, especially related to games, is an incredibly complicated topic to tackle. While this video originally began as a way to clear the air for people who might think I have a negative outlook on games after my previous, I'm once again sitting here recommending that if you feel like you're beginning to be bored of video games, branch out. You might have preconceived ideas of a genre or a franchise that keeps you from actually sitting down and playing even if you do want to. I was the same way with the Final Fantasy VII remake, thinking that if I picked it up, I'd have to continuously play it until it's done or I'm going to forget everything. And that was kind of true, but it's the year 2023. Recap videos exist. Regardless, my issues surrounding my expectations for a genre ended up not being an issue, and I'm sure yours will turn out the same way. And hey, you know what? You might be right. You don't enjoy RTS games or JRPGs or dungeon crawlers, and that's okay. But you tried. You took a chance on a game, and the more you do that, the more likely you'll be able to find something you find fun. Oh yeah, and I also played Elden Ring, that was my favorite game last year.